plaintiff, Eric Manson, says the defendant is his son, but they were estranged for years because Eric was on drugs and incarcerated. Eric claims he and the defendant rebuilt their relationship, and years later, after Eric was arrested again, he asked the defendant to hold on to his property, but he never returned it, so Eric's suing. Defendant Dorsa Diamante Chipman says he didn't see Eric as a father figure for a long time, but eventually they grew closer and even got an apartment together. However, Dorsa Diamante denies owing him for the property, and he's countersuing for impound fees. Start with you. Well, let me start by saying it's nice to see you again, Your Honor. Um, I was on your show back in 2006 as a defendant. Unfortunately, today I'm here as a plaintiff um, with a lawsuit against somebody who I Did truly Did you win love. or lose? Um, I won and lost. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I won half of the suit and I lost half the suit. Got it. It's like All for right. two different reasons. Good enough. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm here, unfortunately, with a lawsuit against my son, somebody I truly love. Um, throughout his childhood and throughout our lifespans, we have had somewhat of a turbulent relationship. I believe due to the fact that uh, when he was younger, he had another man named as his father on his birth certificate. And I had some issues with uh, incarceration and substance abuse. He was about 10. Uh, the guy questioned paternity. We took DNA tests. It was proven that I was his father. I tried to improve my relationship with him. Um, as I say, due, due to some of my problems and some other issues as far as uh, his mom moving around and stuff like that, it was kind of turbulent. Um, around, I guess, when he was about 18, me and his mother reconciled our relationship. Uh, we got involved again. I tried to become another part of his life, a fixture in his life. Uh, at one point, we had an incident where it was the 4th of July. He needed some money. I offered him some money. It wasn't enough money. So he was going to strong arm me. He actually proceeded to come to where I was with three of his friends. I went out to talk to him. He stole on me. Uh, I went in the house and got three of my friends just to make sure nobody else would get involved. Was he on crack? No, no, I hope not. <laughs> Uh, I think... Only a crackhead, that's a crackhead move. <laughs> Come and rob your own father, that's exactly what that is. The only people I know to do that are drug addicts. Sir, did you do this? Let's start there. Did you go and rob your father? No, Your Honor, that was not, <laughs> that's not true at all. Does this um, scenario bring to mind anything even like that? Oh, uh, yeah. It, Tell it, me. Something like that happened. Give me your uh, version of what happened in that instance. Um, basically, uh, he owed me some money for some business we was doing. And uh, I went to get it from him, and he told me to take it from him. Uh, he wasn't, I didn't see him as a father figure at that point in time in my life, so. Okay, so he, he owed you. Yeah. And he told you to take it from him. Yeah, so. All right, that's his story. You say he came and was gonna take it just because you didn't give him enough as a gift. That's your story, right? Absolutely. All right, so you all stick with those stories, and we're going to move on. Anything right. else regarding background? After that, mm -hmm. our relationship actually began to improve. Okay. We actually uh, started finding newfound respect for each other. We started to associate a lot better. We, we became really close, actually. All right. To the degree that uh, he had moved away. Me and his mother relationship had deteriorated. He had moved away. I had moved away. I received a phone call from him. Um, I'm a journeyman diesel technician by trade. I'm certified through the Department of Labor in diesel technology. That's a lot of money you make. Uh, when I'm out of the ability to practice my trade, yes. Yeah, yes. they make good money. Well, he proceeded good to call thing me. Now you don't smoke it up. That's the good thing. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. We don't do any of that anymore. Good. Uh, All right, so uh, you are reconnected with that. Well, yeah, he called me. He said uh, he needed some help. He had purchased a vehicle. It wasn't running correctly. He needed me to come to Las Vegas where he lived and help him to get his car going. Uh, where did you live? I lived at the time in Minnesota, Your Honor. You'll give me some background. Uh, yeah, basically, Your Honor, uh, me and him actually had an apartment together out there in Las Vegas. And um, reason uh, basically for him being arrested and... Uh, I don't know anything about that. So well, yeah, you want to jump right into the uh Yeah, he was the arrested. Content. For, yeah, he now, was he arrested has to tell me about that. So you, you're suing him about property. What happened? Well, actually, what, what happened was, Your Honor, that as he stated, me and him, we ended up having an apartment together in Las Vegas. He allowed me to borrow his vehicle so I could take a young lady home. She lived in a drug-infested, bad area. I was racially profiled. 
So I was stopped by the officer. During his investigation, I had a warrant out of another state. So he detained me in Clark County Correctional Facility. I was gonna be expedited back to the other state to answer the warrant. Um, I had a warrant for possession of precursors, which means that I had purchased some pseudoephedrine for some people who was using it to make methamphetamine. When did that occur? That had occurred uh, maybe a year or two before. And when had you gotten off drugs? Uh, I, I'd been off drugs. Were you convicted of what they alleged? Yes, I was. Ultimately, yes, I was. Why were you doing that? Well, uh, at the time, the guy came and offered me money to buy these pills for him. Okay. I didn't really see where it was a big issue. All right. uh, I bought the pills over counter prescription pills. So. All right. So um, they came and they took you away. And so uh, why are you suing him? So during my time in incarceration, I spoke with my son. I asked him, you know, if he could hold on to my property, my shoes, my clothes, mm -hmm. my tools, and my jewelry. Um, in a matter of weeks, I was going to contact him to have my family um, send for my stuff so I could secure my stuff. Uh, he was your family. He was your roommate and your son. Why wouldn't yeah, it secure yeah. there? Well, I wanted it to be sent back to where I, my mother lived, back where I was Minnesota? going to be incarcerated. No, where? Illinois. Okay, wherever it was. Why weren't you going to go back there? Well, when I got out, I was going to be on parole. So I wasn't going to be allowed to leave the state. All right, go ahead. So I wanted my property to be in Illinois. So mm -hmm. once I was released, mm -hmm. I would have my property and okay. be able so what to happened? return to work. Well, my property was never returned. When you tried to contact him, he never responded? He responded at one point. Okay, so what did he say? He's saying that he didn't have that property. Okay, and did he tell you what he thought happened to it? Once I was released in 17, he told me that some of the property had got thrown away and that he actually admitted to selling my tools. How long had you been gone? Uh, two and a half years. And in two and a half years, no one could contact him to get your property. And several attempts was made, Your Honor. Okay, sir. Um, yeah, I sold his tools, but it was he gave me permission to sell his tools. He released them from his job for my car being impounded, which was wasn't even enough money. It was only two hundred fifty dollars. It was a thousand dollars to get my car in impound. So I still had to come out of pocket seven hundred fifty dollars. Um, as of his clothes, shoes, and jewelry, he had a friend of his come to the apartment where we were staying to get all of that. Did you all discuss him um, getting the tools and selling them in exchange for never, to use once, to get his car out of impound? I never even knew his car was impounded. At the oh. time of my arrest, the car was legally parked. The officer surrendered the keys to me. Sir, sir, weren't yes, you a sir. crackhead? <laughs> huh? Were you or not? Uh, no, I wasn't what a crackhead. What type of dope fiend were you? I used powder cocaine. Okay, so you were a cane head. So... During your years, you saw everything going down. Yes, sir. You know that any time you get pulled over for a violation and you have a warrant on you, they just don't take you and leave the car. They take the car and impound it. I'm talking about you don't know whether they impound it. I don't think I know. They did. <laughs> All know. right, sir. Your counterclaim for 750 is for what? The impound fees? Yeah, the impound fees. All right. And so you say the other person came and picked his other things up? Yeah. You saw him? Yes. Who was this other person? Um, I don't remember his name. How exactly. did he get in? Oh, I, I let him in. What relation was he? He was uh, his friend. He who called friend. you and told you that was his friend? He, we knew him. We hung out with him. We had. You just said you don't really know him. I mean, I don't know his I don't name. Know him. Like, you don't he, know his name. You just hung out with him. Be well, careful. You're going to end up locked up like him if <laughs> you're hanging out with people you don't know their name. <laughs> Sir, you have any other evidence? Uh, I have plenty of evidence, Don't give me plenty. Yeah, give me okay. what you think is going to convince me the most. Absolutely. Here's uh, statements. Uh, from whom? From my sister and my mom who said they tried to contact me. Even in one of them, he admits right here in 2015 that he had a few of my things and he talks about how my mom sent money. There you go. Let's see that. So he says he's going to give me something that, where you admit to having a few of his things. What do you say to that? Um, the only things uh, I had permit. Uh, in possession of was uh, his tools, which I sold to get my car in. Okay, he hands me something where you said, "What's going on?" I only had his clothes and shoes put uh, put up. She was supposed to send everything else. That was before he actually sent his friend to come and get it. When did he send his friend? Do you know the month and year? Um, or the the, the season? 
Well, it, it was it was uh, it was winter. It was about winter. Who was she again? My mother. All right. You want to say anything, ma'am? Um, about sending everything? Yes, Your Honor. State your name. Dion Trinice Chipman. Okay, and your son said you were supposed to send everything else. Well, I did attempt to send Eric's paperwork. Uh, I don't no, know. No, we're talking about his clothes and shoes. Oh, I had no possession of his clothes and shoes. Oh, you had, you only had it, all right. I only had, you referred to this as had. Yeah. Had means you don't have them anymore. Well, I was actually referring to the paperwork more than No, so you said other. clothes. I had his clothes. And paperwork. That's what you're saying. No, you didn't say anything about paperwork. I only had his clothes and shoes. Had means you don't have it for a guy to come later. Your claim okay. is dismissed. Yours is granted. Have a good day. my son. I'm going to love him for life. Yeah, that's my son. Mm -hmm. My father, you know, we still got a good relationship. 